Okay, so first let's talk a little bit about how insulin gets secreted and the role of, um, of glucose in that. So the beta cells of the pancreas are responsible for producing and secreting insulin into the bloodstream. Now, the way that this works is first, glucose is going to be sensed by the beta cells. Glucose is going to enter the pancreatic beta cells through the GLUT2 transporter. Once glucose enters the pancreatic beta cells, there's gonna be a whole series of steps that we're not gonna go into, um, but it, essentially the entrance of glucose into the pancreatic beta cell is gonna initiate a whole series of steps. The other thing that is important to note about these pancreatic beta cells is that they, they like to be prepared. Uh, the pancreatic beta cells are gonna produce a whole bunch of insulin in advance, and they're gonna store it inside these granules here. So the beta cells are gonna have a whole bunch of insulin ready to go. When glucose enters the pancreatic beta cell and initiates this whole signaling cascade, that signaling cascade is going to stimulate these insulin granules to fuse with the plasma membrane and spit insulin out into the bloodstream. So that is how a pancreatic beta cell can, um, will be stimulated by glucose in order to secrete insulin. And now we're not gonna go into details about this whole signaling pathway, but suffice it to say that it is a pathway that is reliant also on that, those differences in concentration between sodium and potassium um, between the inside and the outside of the cell. So it's another place where we're really relying on those sodium potassium exchange pumps. Okay, take home message here though is that um, the, panc the pancreatic beta cells can sense glucose, which is going to cause the pancreatic beta cell to secrete its preformed insulin into the bloodstream. So it's a very fast response. And that's what we see here. Now the insulin is entering the bloodstream and traveling around the body. Okay, now let's talk a little bit more detail about how insulin will initiate um, GLUT4 to be functioning in the adipose and in the muscle cells. So adipose cells and muscle cells also like to be prepared in that they have a whole bunch of the GLUT4 proteins stored inside of their cells, inside these vesicles. Now, when insulin is circulating through the bloodstream, insulin will bind to the insulin receptor that is sitting on the outside of the muscle cell or the adipocyte. When insulin binds the insulin receptor, that causes a whole signal cascade inside the cell that causes this vesicle full of GLUT4 to merge with the cell membrane so that then we have the insertion of these GLUT4 transporters into the membrane. And once those, once those GLUT4 transporters are in the membrane, then glucose that's floating around the bloodstream can enter the cell. And so these GLUT4 transporters are going to stay sitting in the membrane of our muscle cells and our adipose cells as long as insulin is present. When insulin is, when insulin is no longer present, then the, um, the muscle cell will just kind of swallow those uh, GLUT4 transporters back inside the cell and recycle them so that they're ready for next time. So the take home message here is that when insulin is present, that is going to stimulate the insertion of GLUT4 transporters into the, plant, into the membrane of our muscle cells and our adipocytes. When GLUT4 is present, then that means that um, our muscle cells and our adipocytes can take in glucose from the bloodstream. But when insulin is not present, then these GLUT4 transporters will, um, will, not, will be stored inside of the cell and we won't, they can't be used to absorb glucose from the bloodstream.